you know, just play the card. If you feel like you need to play the card, man, it's your card to play. But man, don't and a lot of us, a lot of people that didn't watch women's basketball before this for real. So a lot people, of people I mean, don't watch sports, or the people that always come into sports with the heavy screens. That's not even just women's basketball. It's general. Remember all these people that stopped watching the NFL when Kaepernick got banned, but wasn't watching it beforehand anyway. So just remember that. You, you got to. Or people that said that soccer wasn't gonna, you know, do anything. You know, that now, wouldn't mean nothing. Now that now before we go, I, I got one question for you though. Yep. In, the, in the sports verse here, because it's been real interesting to see what happens. Now, we got a lot of young brothers that's getting ready to come out in the NFL draft this year. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be awesome to see how that goes out. But you still got probably the best quarterback that's out there available is Lamar Jackson. And, you know, how this whole thing is going. And people have brought this up, and I find it to be kind of an interesting uh, topic. Do you think that Lamar Jackson's issues this offseason have come from more from how he's approached it, his style of play, or is it truly being a black ball situation with owners in the league? I think he's being black ball not, be, not because of racially, before people go there. I think it's because he's been circumventing the system with his mom being his agent. Well, I mean, but he's his own now. Right, but I'm talking about, but not, I'm talking about just that whole thing of not having an agent. I'm not doing – I'm kind of doing it on my own. Like, I'm circumventing the normal process that, that goes on, and I'm just betting on myself. Like – if you want to, if you want to get me, come call me. So, do you you think it's a you think it's a it's not just the owners, it's the whole system that's that's backing out on him. Oh yeah, and the problem is, is I think they can they're gonna get it caught up with it potentially if no one picks him up and there's not a real reason why he's not being picked up. Collusion is gonna well, be a gonna very, very good thing to be able to prove. My issue with collusion in in like the textbook version of collusion is he's not a free agent; he's got a job. So it's not that he doesn't have a job. The Ravens extended the, uh, the the contract to him, and the Ravens don't want to trade him, you know, for whatever. Yeah, obviously you don't want to trade Lamar Jackson. If you take him off that team, oof, I mean, that, that, that team's awful. But the problem is I think a lot of those owners speaking up ahead of time puts a tink in that of saying, oh, no, no, we, we never – we don't have no reason. Well, that's a great point. That's a great point. I just think – Nobody said nothing. Then now, here's my thing. Changing. Here's my thing. What I'm saying when I say that is I'm talking about how it could be seen as a textbook example of collusion. Oh, they're I got Because say he got a job. In my mind, people deciding that they don't want to get engaged in this is, is ridiculous. What's the hardest thing to get in sports is an in-prime – number one tier quarterback because teams just don't put them out there. They just don't get out there. Like they get signed up damn near as soon as they, a year before they write to even up, like it just don't happen. But when I look at how this is being handled and, and everything that's going into this, like how many teams that just have no sense to buy out of it. Like it makes sense now why the Panthers didn't get into it. They was moving up to get, uh, they wanted to do something different, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that that's, that's their choice. Some of these teams like Atlanta, you know, Atlanta definitely. Think about Lamar Jackson in Atlanta. Oh, I mean, we've seen that before. We had 30 for 30. No, no, no. <laughs> Different guy. Sorry. Sorry. Too soon. Different guy. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, I mean, this, this, I'll put it this way. And that was a two-parter. <laughs> There's a lot more teams in the NFL that could use Lamar Jackson than couldn't use him. And, yeah. you know, they'll move water, they'll move water and, and, and make do all sorts of stuff to make things happen to get guys all the time. But nobody wants to do it for this. I think some of it is that I do think there's some places where the contract don't make sense. I think there's some places where, you know, it, they got a guy already and I'm not going to like say, hey, man, the Cincinnati Bengals need to go get Lamar Jackson. Like, no, they got a guy already. You know what I mean? But, you know, when I look at like, you know, David Carr gets one hundred and thirty million dollars and. You know, Daniel Jones making $47 million next year. And Geno Smith gets $100 million. And Jimmy Garoppolo got a gig and all this stuff. I'm like, yo, those guys ain't moving the needle. Then Lamar is out there. And Lamar is definitely worth two first-round picks if you got the cap room and your team going to support it. So this is a wild-ass situation to me. And I think that it's there's a lot of things that could happen. I, I'm almost surprised that somebody's agent hasn't stepped up to um to say, listen, man, can I help out just so we don't tank out the, the market? Like, we don't ruin the market? Like, if I'm Joe, Joe Burrow's agent or Trevor Lawrence's agent or something, I'm calling Lamar. Like, hey, man, I don't, I won't even take anything away from this. I just want to help this get resolved so it helps <laughs> my guys out. <laughs> like, you got a lot of money that's getting ready to go on the market. Between I, I, Do you think that the, 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 to add to the collusion aspect, if he wanted to go that route, them uh, with the Deshaun Watson, does that make it worse that, like, y'all – Gave this this uh alleged rapist all this extra money, and now you know I ain't did nothing wrong. I ain't did nothing in this situation. 
And no, I, I, yeah, I think that that I think that that could be hard. Hard. That'd be a hard. I mean, I'm through. saying for your for jury is a PR move. I think that's a good thing. To, I mean, you don't have to say that, but it can. It's like it's kind of underwritten in the kind of thing. The Deshaun Watson contract has made things very complicated with the whole league and how all this stuff works out. Um, I think that Lamar Jackson is catching the backlash for that. Yes. I think that the only difference, I think, when I look at some of these guys like Justin Herbert, when I look at guys like even Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen, all them, they wasn't trying to go to a different team. Like the team they were on was just trying to keep them in tow. So the expectation Lamar has got is he's looking at all this. He's like, nah, man, I see what can happen, what can happen. I want that same thing. And he's not willing to take bend the knee on it or whatnot. The cat who should be watching all this and should be really paying attention to how all this folds out is Jalen Hurts. Because Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts is due cash right now. He is due money today. So, like, he got one year left. There ain't going to be a fifth-year extension because he wasn't a first-round pick. And, like, what you have to do is get locked in with him real soon. And you saw the Eagles let a lot of guys go because they know they got to get that taken care of and they got to get in place with that. So, Who gets signed first? What's that? Who gets signed first, Lamar Jackson or Hurt? Well, I mean, Lamar technically is signed already. Um, he's got I mean, for a new deal. deal. Not, 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 not so much. Like an deal. extension deal? Yeah. I think, man, the way this is going right now, I mean, it really depends on if Lamar gets traded. Like, the draft is coming up. I think people don't want to trade draft picks from this draft. I don't think Lamar could get traded before this draft, which is kind of wild because some contracts are going to guarantee and stuff like that's going to go into play. But anything can happen. So I would say that I think that I think that Lamar is going to get resolved before Jalen. Jalen's a matter of time type thing. Like, Jalen's okay. going to happen. Jalen can happen just before camp. Lamar, they got to get this straightened out. <laughs> like they got to get this worked out because like i said like it's starting to take bad undertones for everything and something's got to give i think it's gonna have to be some give on both sides but it's got to get straightened out because there's no reason we should be having more watch about where aaron Rodgers plays in 2023 than lamar jackson that's just asinine as hell to me and that's real <clears throat> dang i got i want my brother to get his bread though i do too i want that dude i want i want yeah. i want him to get everything that's earned to him Everything, everything that everything that belongs to him, he should get it. I think that that uh, I think that you both got that Deshaun Watson deal and that Patrick Mahomes deal to blame for why things is working out the way they are. Though. <laughs> Patrick took a whole lot of potential money for a long ass time. He took a baseball contract in a in a in a football sport, and that was always going to be an issue when you when you when you do when you do that when you cross over like that. And yeah, and Deshaun Watson just is like. I'm going to pick this bag right now and run it up. Nobody could care less than Deshaun Watson, who after he got that money, the team restructured it so he didn't have to pay out from it. His real money going to kick in this year because they said he wasn't making money last year when he was suspended, so he ain't really have to do it. Like, Cleveland is the big homie team of the league. Like, they 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 gave Jadavian Clowney – I mean, I'm sorry, they gave um they gave Miles Garrett money after he – uh. Smack no dude in the head with that helmet. The helmet. And then they ran that money over to him. That's the big homie squad right there. I bet you ever even even Tyreek Hill said that autograph signed another day. He said, Man, I was trying to sign with Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they're giving out the big homie money. Yeah, over. they giving it away guaranteed up there. Boy, I bet you everybody in the league looked at that and said, That's what I'm trying to get if they're getting it like that. <laughs> so One I thing know, I did want to ask you as we, as we wrap up, man. I do. How, how do you thinking about baseball, man? With the faster games, man. Like, uh, I do. I did want you to kind of uh, throw some yeah. uh, light on that. Yeah. So I went to my first game of the year the other day, and uh, you know, the first thing is, is that when you in it, you notice it. Like, it's not even Ooh. like subtle. Like, you notice it. Like, you kind of have to almost time your experience out differently as a viewer, because like you're gonna be there, and like the thing that's kind of wild is, is that like. You'll go to the bathroom. If there's a line in that joint, you might miss an inning, like a straight up inning, just through just the amount of people getting like going to the bathroom or standing in line to get something. Like it moves. There's no part of the game that's not time now that's really like getting in there. And I'm really interested to see how it like pitchers deal with it. Because you've seen a lot of guys who've had to rework their motion, have to be cognizant, as cognizant of the clock. So you got to run on base. You got to watch that run on base because the bases are bigger now. So stealing bases is going to be a little bit easier as well. But you got this pitch clock, so you got to pay attention to this clock. You got to pay attention to when the batter gets in. You got to pay attention to when the guy gets on base. Like, there's a lot to it. But it feels really brisk. It feels really good. It's good to see more balls in play. 
and more action happening because of that, because the shift is not in, in, in alignment anymore. Like it, it was, it, it's kind of like watching a different version of the sport, but in better ways. So I, okay. I've enjoyed what it is. It makes the at home experience move a lot quicker. The only questions I've really got about it is, is how is baseball going to reconcile both having quicker games, but also in a lot of ways selling less product. Like, cause you know, one of the big drivers at a baseball game is going to be liquor sales. Well, they stopped liquor sales at the seventh inning stretch. So the game is faster, which means less commercials, but you also are having less time in the park. So you're doing less. And then also you had these huge media uh, streaming issues that they've got right now with the, with the diamond sports group bankruptcy. So you don't even Bally's right. That's Bally's. Yeah. And that's the, that's the holder of Bally's that holds uh, 14 major league teams. Um, So, I mean, you got a lot of things that are at ahead as far as kind of like a game style and play revolution, but also a financial change. I mean, that can impact. What's up, man? It's your boy, Matt. And if you enjoy this, click that subscribe, man, to get a, get more content from SOLC right here and from across the whole platform here, man. Get it right over there right now. Peace.